welcome back to the studio. I'm Lisa. I've got a new project for you today. So I've got these Murini, and they're a lot of fun to work with. And so I'm always trying to figure out a new way to use them. I like to use them, but I try to, they're kind of um, exotic. So I like to figure out ways to use them where I'm not using too many because I don't want to, you know, use them up. I don't use too many, but I get something that's really unique just to the shape and the style of those pieces. Now what makes these unique is that they're glass rods with a pattern in them. And there's little squares or circles or whatever in there so that when you use them upright like this, rather than just getting a circular color, you also get a cool pattern. So that's very fun. So I have a stainless steel cookie cutter here, and my idea is to create a spiral of these cut murini and put them in here and then fire it. So stainless steel cools faster, uh, let's see, cools faster, yeah, it cools faster than the glass, I have to remind myself. And so um, what we want to do is line the inside of this mold with uh, this eighth inch thick fiber paper and then thin fire fiber paper so that when this contracts as it cools it doesn't crush our glass and break it. So we're going to do that by taking this fiber paper, it's cut to a one inch width, we're going to tuck it in here, push it all the way down, push it all the way down over here and tuck it into that corner, tuck it into the corner over here, tuck it into the corner over here, and then you can see how that's lined in there nicely. We're going to take our scissor, First, I want to make sure that those corners are really as tight as I can get them. Because otherwise, if it's too short and my glass comes in contact with the mold, it can cause breakage. And we don't really like that. Okay, so here you can see the crease in there and where I'm going to cut that. And create a crease right there like that. All right, take my scissor, cut straight down. And then that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to take the thin fire and line it again, and this time I'm going to have the seam in a different place. And the, the eighth inch material you do not want to overlap because it'll change the shape of your artwork. This thin fire can overlap, and it's actually kind of a good idea if it does because then you know you have good coverage inside this mold. So now I'm going to cut this to size. There we go. There we go, and now we've got that lined in there. Now, if it's coming away from the edge of the mold a little bit on you, like this is doing here, you can take a little bit of clear tape and tuck that, make that sure that's tucked into the corner here. And I can put a little bit of clear tape down here, so you can see that, to ensure that it stays in that corner nice and snug. Now, I want my other corner to be snug as well, so I'm going to tuck a little piece of tape, make sure my corners are nice and tight, tuck another little piece of tape over here. There we go. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to put one where we have this little bit of overlap. So that it, because sometimes, when I've done this technique, sometimes uh, the mold kind of fights you. Matter of fact, look at this, it's buckling here. So rather than worry about that, I'm just going to add a little piece of tape, and this time I'm going to put it on the bottom because it seems to hold better that way. There we go. Put this, turn this where you can see it. There we are. Okay, now we've got the stainless steel cookie cutter square, eighth inch thick fiber paper, and then thin fire on the inside. The eighth inch material acts like a cushion to protect the glass from the cooling stainless steel, and the thin fire gives us a really, really pretty edge. Nice, smooth, quality edge that doesn't need any, it doesn't uh, have any spikes and requires very little, if any, cold working. So that's terrific. All right, so I've got my little piece here. So this is my Murini, and I've made a little pattern on the paper here. This is a one inch wide strip here. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take this little tub, and put it here. I'm gonna measure this with my finger, like that. Take it over the tub, and then just nip it with the mosaic nippers. Measure it with my finger, and nip it. And then the extra pieces go in this little bucket. So that's how those are nipped. Real quick and easy. See that? Isn't that fun? I'll add those to my bucket. All right, so now to assemble the piece, I have decided to start with white. 
And then I'm gonna do rainbow colors. Let's see, I've gotta sweep this a little bit first. Okay. okay, so I've got some stuff on the table here from cutting the glass, so let's go ahead and clean that off. There we go. All right, so I also wanna build this on top of a kiln shelf. So over here, I have a small little kiln shelf. We'll build that on there. It's got a little dust on it, so go ahead and sweep that off a little bit. Right here into the dustpan. Woo! Let's see, let's make more of a mess. There we go. All right, so we're gonna build this on a kiln shelf to make it easier once it's assembled to transport it to the kiln. Now you can see this kiln shelf is kind of dirty, and I don't wanna get that on my glass. So, because I don't have a towel, I'm just gonna wipe it on my pants. I'm in the studio, that's okay. All right, so move this here. And I'm gonna take a piece of white, then a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then violet. And I think that white one's thick, so I'm gonna go with a thinner white one. And then we're gonna repeat the white. <clears throat> and that's gonna be our color pattern there. So let's go ahead and repeat that again. So we've got red, orange, yellow. Look how delicious these are. Isn't that fun? So yellow, green, blue, and we're using this color here today for violet. And then let's go ahead and add white. Look how pretty that is. All right, let's do it another, another repeat. And truthfully, I haven't done this many repeats before. I hope this works. Um, we're gonna find out together whether or not this method is gonna work for us. So, all right, there we go. So we have three repeats of our pattern. Let's take this ruler here and cinch up the bottom there. All right, now here comes the tricky part. We're gonna take this scotch tape and go over the top. Right, here we go. Come on, isn't that fun? All right, now I'm gonna wrap that around. Now the scotch tape I've learned burns off in the kiln, so without leaving any residue. So let's take this and kind of roll it up on itself. See what ha what's happening here. The tape is acting like a binder here. And we're rolling up the glass, and look how cool that is. All right, now we're gonna try to move this, transport this into the mold. So we're picking it up. Look at that, ooh, fun, right? And I'm gonna tuck it in the mold. Ooh, yeah, hey, that's working. That's working. Now, it's interesting that the reds are beside each other and the green, the oranges and everything are beside each other. So maybe we don't wanna continue with this pattern. Maybe we wanna do a different pattern, but you know, we've already started, we're gonna keep going. All right, so we ended with a white. So now we're gonna do the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and then white. And then red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Lavender, indigo, all right, is that correct? Yep. Okay, now we need another white. Well, guess what, I don't have any white. So we're gonna have to cut one if we want to keep that white going on in there. Now, at this point, I was thinking of doing like a spiral all the way around. I'm a little surprised that the colors are coming in contact with each other. I don't know, maybe they won't as we get further along, but that really wasn't what I had in mind. So at this point, what do I do? Do I move this to the corner and make like four of these little clusters? Or do I make another cluster and wrap it around there? Don't really know. We're gonna just, I think I will make another cluster and try to wrap it around. I think it's gonna be a little tricky to take that out and handle it, but what the heck? Let's give it a try. All right, so I've got one. This time I have only two repeats, because three was a little complicated to work with. Oh, let me do something else first. Let me take my ruler and ensure that these are kind of level on the bottom. There we go. And then take this tape, oops, put it over the top. Now I only put the tape on one side 
and that's the direction that I roll the glass because the tape does not give or stretch so you can't really roll it look how fun that is right Ooh. <laughs> okay let's take this off I don't know if this is a good idea to do that or not I'll wrap that around fun well, look these are standing up pretty well on their own so maybe we'll just keep moving forward with this technique until we can't and then we'll figure out what to do next all right white all right because we ended with a white so we start with a red red orange yellow yellow green blue purple and then we're going to end with another white all right so i've got another uh, double repeat of the pattern some more tape on here i did cinch up the bottom edge there securing that tape now your glass has to be clean and dry for the tape to stick so um, if for any reason you got your glass wet you want to make sure that it's dry oh that is not just so pretty like a little a little rainbow fence all right so let's see how we're doing here we're getting uh, I think we can go around one more time before we have to consider doing just tucking them in. All right, here we go. Got a repeat happening here again. That's a fat one. Go All right. Oops. Let's see. What do we got? Our violet. And we ran out of white again, so we got to cut a few more white. Cut three here. All right. Put that there. And we got a repeat again. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and now we're out of violet. So I didn't want to cut too many of these and have them left over because, you know, once they're cut, if you want to use them for something smaller, they're a little bit of a hassle to, to make smaller from these little itty bitty pieces. So I'm kind of cutting, at this point, cutting as I go along because I don't want too many of these hanging around the studio. I prefer them long like this because they have, I have more opportunity, more options to use them. All right, there we go. Let's tuck this over here. It's like little, little rainbow humans standing together as one in harmony. I might, I might title this Little Rainbow Humans. All right, so you see how cool that's coming out? Oops. See, it wants to move. Ooh, look at them. All the little humans are huddling to one side. So this will shrink a little bit, you know, uh, reduce a little bit in height. But overall, it should be, if it's snug on the um, mold, it should retain its height and all the color. So at this point, I think, I'm going to put this on here. And now I think I'm just going to tuck individuals in because I don't know that doing another round, well, I don't know, maybe I can do another round. Let's see. We snug them together. All right, yeah, let's go for one more round because that does make things a little simpler as far as tucking them in. Okay, so we've decided tucking them in was the way to go uh, because this is really getting very tight to the sides of this mold. I'm going to kind of center that. And I want to make sure I have the same number of pieces. So I have, uh, let's see, five orange, six orange, two red. So I'm going to cut up some more pieces so I have six of each color. Three, Oops, four, five, six. Right, as you can see, these little guys want to jump around. All right, we need a little more green. Six red, a little more green. We have one in there, two, three. All right, so that's five. One more. There we go. All right, we need some more of this indigo. three. All right, what else? 
else do we need? We've got red, we need yellow. Is that the right color? That looks kind of green. I think this is the right yellow. Yep, a little bit more marigold. Oops. Now this project is only going to require one firing. We'll do a full fuse temperature. I'll take it to the same, use the same program I use for most of my other projects. And I can do that even though it's about an inch tall because it's, um, it's very small. So let me, oh, I think I got a little carried away with the yellow. Yep, I did. Okay. And what are we missing? We have green. Oh, we need blue. Here we are. So you can use a ruler to cut these. This little piece of paper is working fine for me. I actually did this because I thought visually it'd be easier for you to see what I'm doing. All right, so we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. We're a little short on violet. Two more of those. Okay, I just realized I forgot white. So we need a few more white. Actually, these are a little thicker, but I think I'll use it anyway. Because I might need a little thicker near the edge. Okay. Alright, so let's tuck these in. Alright, can you can you see what's going on there? How about that? Alright. So we're gonna go ahead and tuck these pieces in the corners to fill up this mold. So there's no blue over here, so I'm gonna stick a blue. I wonder if tweezers would be helpful for this. Probably. This is kind of fun. You know those little games they have where you put the pegs in? It's kind of like that. There's a lot of blue there, so let's tuck a purple in. Yeah. Now I want to make sure that I don't um, scratch the mold here and ruin that nice coating I have. Let's see, I think white would go nicely here. So I'm thinking, yes. Tweezers would be a terrific idea if I had remembered to bring them over here. Ooh, so I can also use this little tool to kind of snug things up. And that's working kind of nicely. Because the tighter they are, the more height I will have on the finished project. And that kind of appeals to me. Let's see that right there. Green, blue. This is taking more pieces than I expected, which is not a bad thing. I probably should have counted how many of these Murini I used to let you know, but I'm thinking it's probably going to take about six of these. Let's see, what are, what are these? Uh, these are nine inches long. So if you're about six of these, probably one each color in order to achieve this project. Let's see, I've got a bunch of red there. Maybe I want a white. Yeah, tuck that in. Over here I could tuck something in, I'm sure. Maybe a red. Yep. All right, now we have one that wants to fall over. Ooh, I'm loving this way to come out. So I had a plan for how these colors were gonna, uh, the positioning of them in relation to each other, and that totally went out the window when we uh, made, excuse me, made the spiral and put them in a square mold. So that's something to keep in mind. And now at this point, since the pattern is totally random. I'm just going to kind of cinch them to these two edges and fill in between. So here I've got a gap between two of the layers. I'm just going to stick a piece in there. Cinch those up. Ooh, this is working out nicely. It's so cool too because some of these have a little star shape, some are a little square shape, some are round pattern inside. There's all different patterns here and you don't realize the um, the value of that until you're looking down at them like this. You don't realize how pretty they are. So that had a red one there. So I went on to do yellow orange. There we go. And now yellow. White. Okay. 
Okay, this little uh, tooth, this little brush here is working fabulously for this. We need a big, nice blue one here. Oh, I got a green one here. Oops, come back. Let's see, we'll put a green one there. I think we're gonna have just enough. With what I have here in this little tub, which is terrific. All right, so I'm gonna add a red one over here where I don't have any red. I'm using this brush to create a little space here and snug some of the pieces up against each other. Oh boy, now I'm starting to feel like a surgeon tucking these in here. Ooh, this one could use an orange right there. Oh, that one slid right in beautifully. See over here, we could use yellow, I think. Ooh, now it's getting tight. Now it's saying, ooh, I don't know about you. And I have a blue one and a white, two white ones left. I'm gonna see if I can get these in there. Maybe not. Maybe over here, I could fit a white one. Yep. Ooh, that is so fun. Okay, so plan, you know, to have a, you know, rainbow kind of order. Don't have a rainbow order. We have rainbow colors. We have a nice fit. Uh, we, I believe we kept the integrity of the liners on the inside of the mold. I don't think anything ripped there. I think we're going to be good. I wonder if I can fit this last. I have one piece of blue left and one piece of white. But I don't know about this. Ooh, wait, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Get a little hammer here. There we go, we got that one in, but that white one, I don't know. Um, well, let's see over here, maybe. No, I think it's telling me I'm full. You're, you're done. Okay, one white piece left. Fine, no problem. All right, all right, so, oh, wait, maybe over here. Look, maybe I could fit it in here, but I already have a white there. Do I want it there? I don't know. Maybe I move this orange over. Oh, gosh. This, um, yeah, wait, we're getting this baby in there. It's going in there. You're going in there. I hope it doesn't, ex oh, look at that. Okay, but now we know that this mold is very full. So that's great. All right, um, okay, so I'm gonna bring this up here where we can see it. Try to make sure nothing happens to that. Look how beautiful. All right, remember stainless steel, eighth inch material, fiber material, thin fire fiber material, and we're gonna fire this to a full fuse temperature. So I'm gonna put this in the kiln, we'll fire it overnight, and then uh, bring you back and show you what it looks like. Welcome back to the studio, and we are here to check out this Murini piece that has been gluing overnight. It's been a few more days than overnight, but anyway, it's been gluing, and look how fun this turned out. Oop, let me get find you there. There we are. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness, and look at the back. The side, and look at the back. Isn't that just awesome? That texture, well, it's really not any texture, but there's a lot of visual pattern going on. You can see all these little intricate details and great amount of depth in there, really fun stuff. So we basically took a little cookie cutter, stainless steel cookie cutter, lined it with um, eighth inch thick fiber paper, then thin fire fiber paper, and then filled it with these very cool cut murinis. And I wanted to go with kind of a rainbow color combination we did, but it uh, they didn't come out in necessarily a uh, organized pattern, but that's okay. I still love it. I still think it's very pretty. It reminds me of a carnival and um, having a good time and just being very, very happy. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this. I wanted to share with you some things that are kind of simple, you know, things that you can put together kind of quickly in your studio for um, instant gratification so you can get out there, have a good time, and, you know, complete something. And then the next day you've got something to look forward to when you go out to the studio and open up that kiln and see that that wonderful project inside there that you made. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're enjoying these vlogs and these different topics that we're covering. Please, if you have ideas, we'd love to hear them. You know, Nikki and I, oh my gosh, we have plenty of ideas, but if there's something specific you wanna see or hear about or want us to do, let us know. We'd be happy to give that a try also. So I wanna um, encourage you to join my premium video subscription membership. I've got 10 videos up, got a new one coming out next week and lots of exciting techniques, advanced techniques, painting with frit, um, learning how to weave glass, all these different things that you can learn one project at a time in a very easy to follow step-by-step -step instruction with a full pattern ebook, which gives you the firing guides, full-size pattern, all sorts of great stuff.
So if you, um, you can also enjoy those videos one by one, one at a time. If you go on my website and go to single video projects, you can enjoy them that way if you don't want to join the membership. Um, also, I've got lots of different resources there for you. Firing guides, free patterns, um, lots of different fun stuff for you to look at. Pictures of, of work we've done, pictures of things we have going on. So please feel free to visit my website and visit often because there's always something new there. And until next time, you know, like, follow, subscribe, and share. If you're having a good time, share this fun experience with your other fellow artists and glass fusers. So thanks again for joining me. I um, hope to see you again soon. And until next time, happy fusing.